Hello everyone. Good evening. My name is Syed Yasin Ibn Ahmed. Welcome to today's webinar. You can feel free to call me Yasin. I am currently working in Refinitiv and I have completed 5 years in the organization. I have completed my graduation in New Horizon College Bangalore and I have specialized in finance. I am currently pursuing PGPM in Great Lakes and I would be sharing the journey on operation management and also the journey with Great Lakes. Today, I will talk to you about the journey that I've gone through in the last five years with the organization. I've talked to the management specialist too, and I have grown in the ranks to the organization subject. In the last five years, the most crucial aspect I realized is that from school and to college to undergraduation is that there is a lack of knowledge that is being shared or addressed to these students that are pursuing and trying to try to build a journey in the in the organization of MNCs. Okay, so today's uh, topic is going to be the operation excellence and critical thinking. If you must be wondering what is operation management, operation management deals with products and services. As we all know, we on day to day basis we do buy products, we do sell products. Operation operation management comes in place to understand the process. Of the input and the output. The input could be your materials, your manpower, your machines. Your output could be your services delivered or your physical goods. Today, I'm going to cover the basic tools and techniques for problem solving of quality control and operational experience. The topics that I will be covering today is 5S, Kaizen, Process Mapping, Theory Z, Cause, of, cause and Effect, Fishbone Diagram and operation management assessing the quality of hospitals with operation management excellence tools and techniques. What is 5S? As you all know, with the pandemic, all of us have been working from home and essentially our work environment of the world, this is your room or your office, your hall. And this tool or technique is something that you could implement in your day-to-day -day life. In an organization, as you know, if you want to perform efficiently, effectively, and safely, the, uh, the company looks at ways how they could remove what's unnecessary, organizing things logically, and perform housekeeping tasks, keeping the cycle going, organize clean, clean, uh, organize clean, and repeat. Okay. The five S five S consists of sort, second order, shine, standardize, and sustain. As you know. Sort essentially means that what is required in the process to perform the day-to-day -day activity. Simplified. This is essentially what are the tools, techniques, or processes that are used to complete a task. Shine. That simply means that in order to complete your sort and simplify, we need to ensure that the process is simple, clean, and ensuring the lecturing. Activity, for example, the sources of dust, the making of cleaning, or everyday working activity. And standardize. Ensure the current standards are achieved for short, shine, and simplify are monitored and maintained. Okay? And sustain is essentially every employee contributes to sustaining the rate of improvement. What this essentially means is that, means is that as you are working from home on day to day basis, you would also want the environment to be as, as clean as efficient, as sorted, as simple, as standardized. Because as in over the years, over the last one and a half year, you realize that you feel the stress of working from home. You feel the burnout. How do you deal with that kind of situation? Because once you go back to the office, it's a very rigorous standard environment, right? Likewise, you need to you can apply this in your day-to-day -day lifestyle. What you can do is sort, set in order, you shine, you standardize the process. You sustain. One of the most important tool, and I'm pretty sure all of you have come across in various uh, organizations, that the word Kaizen. Kaizen essentially is to address a particular issue that keeps repeating or that keeps happening. The word Kai means change, Zen means good. The, the, the concept of Kaizen began in, after the World War II when Toyota implemented quality circles in this production process. Kaizen was born by in the era of 1930s 
by Masaki Imai, a Japanese organizational theorist and a management consultant. His work on quality management specifically on Kaizen is well known. In, in modern world, the word Kaizen is designed to address a particular issue for a short period of time. So the event Kaizen is not necessarily a course of month or a two. It's just a very short period. It could be two days. It could be 10 days. It could be 15 days workshop. Most of the events, most of the Kaizen events are called as Kaizen Blitz or Kaizen events. And all Kaizen events must be clear and with concise objects. So Kaizen consists of five W's and one H of Kaizen. So essentially, when you're hosting an event, trying to solve a particular issue in the organization, a particular recurring issue that keeps happening, you need to answer five basic questions with who, what, where, when, why, and how. So who, who does the task? Who is the reason that keeps happening? Who should be doing it? Who else can do it? Who else should do it? What? So when the event is happening, what is the issue that's happening? Should it be done? What else can be done? Who else should be doing it as well? And where? Where do you do the event? What is done to complete the task? What is done to complete the issue? What else can be done? Where can it be done? When? When does the issue happen? When does the issue keep happening? What should be done to avoid this issue when it occurs? And what other times can it be done? And you have why? Why does it? Why does an issue happen? What? Why do they do it? Where do they do it? What is the? What are the ways that are being doing? So when you answer the five W's, you have the ans answer how. So each of them is how do you do it? How is it done? How can it be done? How can it be approved? How can the process be change? Who can do it? How can it be improved? For example. Three years back, we had a recurring issue where the client kept raising disputes for a specific reason for a specific country. So we had a Kaizen event where we had all the all the required stakeholders in a meeting. It was a two-day workshop where we brainstormed the ideas of who was the reason, which team was leading to the errors, what, what was happening, where was it happening? Essentially, what platform, which tool, which what was the reason that was happening? When, which part of the month, which part of the year, which what was the e event that was happening and why? Why does the particular issue happen is one of the reasons you need to identify. And how is essentially when you are trying to understand the five W's, you come to a conclusion about how does it happen and how you can improve. So Kaizen is you know you can implement in your day to day life for example if you see in your team in your in your in your team at workplace you see a specific event or a specific problem that's recurring on a on a regular basis what you could do is you could address the particular issue through kaizen tool and technique okay so with with kaizen when you map out the kaizen of what where how when why and who you do is your process map process mapping so what is process mapping as as you're working in a large organization you have various teams on different floors you have teams across the countries you have various people across the world and there's a lot of inter interdependencies with the various teams that you work with a process map is essentially to map out the various teams the various people that are involved and also the various milestones in a project Okay, the process mapping is essentially to give the leadership team, the, the stakeholders, a visual view to show the process and the, the various series of events. The purpose of process mapping is essentially to map out the efficiencies, the, uh, to improve the process, increase the communication, and to provide the process document. It is very, very crucial for any organization to map out the process from Code to cash. For example, if you have a customer that wants to buy a, wants to have it, wants to credit, where would it start off? The customer wants to buy a product. Do you fill in the credit form? The form is given to the sales team, and then the order is entered. When the order is entered, it goes it goes to the credit check. It goes back to the management to val validate the credit criteria. 
if the sale is not if the client has a bad credit the sale is not approved if if the if the credit balance is really high the credit score is really high the accounts the the the, the credit management team validates the client's accounts receivable calculates the credit term a credit report has been issued the terms have been agreed by the client and the customer and the sale is approved now if you are mapping out let's say the credit period to issue a credit to the customer from a bank is 7 days and if you would like to bring down the process to 3 days and if you see that the credit check from the credit department takes the most amount of time for example it takes 2 days out of the 7 days to perform the credit check so if you are looking at this a uh, very simple process map you understand that the credit check is the most uh the, the the aspect or the milestone that has the most amount of delay what you do is you go back to you go back to your kaizen technique that we just discuss who are the people who are the people from the credit management team what are the task that is performed by the credit management where does it happen and how long does it happen why does it take 2 days to complete the task and then you come back to your how how can you improve the process like likewise there are various tools that you can implement in your day to life day to day life to map out a process for example if if you are in a team and you want to understand that what's go if you're assessing your performance let's say from q1 to q2 in your q1 your performance is really good your q2 the performance goes down what you could do is in q3 when the clients or the customers or your personal performance you can map it down and how you how would you do this you can simply do this on excel you can do this on powerpoint you have ibm blueworks you have business optics you have various tools online a lot of open source tools that are available to map out process so in an organization when you are trying to look at operational excellence it's very very important as a operation manager to understand each and every process each of the milestones each of the swim lanes the swim lanes are essentially the teams that are involved to map out the process when you map out the process it's very 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 effective uh, to communicate to the various department and also overall documentation of the process because as and well as and when the technology and the process have been evolving it's also very important in your organization that the map the map, the process have been mapped out it you can look back and look at ways how you can improve it with the process map you can essentially look at ways and look at events where the process map can be used what happens when you map map out a process map there is a very very important concept called theory z and i'm very sure all of us at the uh, at various organizations startups and mncs your uh, non profit organizations you know there is a top management you do you know there is a middle management you have supervisors advisors you have your workers now if you think about it if you wanted to communicate to the top management in the company how would you do it because you have your supervisors you have your middle management you have your top management so theory z is essentially how do you re- how does the top management know what are the grievances what are the problems what are the issues at the various layers of the organization the theory z was proposed by dr william ochi in in 1980s aimed to improve employees loyalty by engaging the top floor to the shop floor through quality circles it is improved the it is to essentially increase the participation in continuous improvement with the top management for example in my organization every quarter we have a glint survey that is rolled out that survey essentially talks about are you happy in the organization what can improve from last quarter to this quarter it's it, the whole idea of theory z is continuous improvement i am very sure in india all of the mncs that are let's say in from india and also the organizations that have outsourced their uh, the the operations in india you would see that the top management is always looking at ways how do you communicate to the to the to the workers the supervisors and the middle management theory z is essentially a way of the top management to to engage with the with the uh, the the lower part of the organization and how do you do it you can take surveys you can take activities you can host workshops town halls all of these activities your q and a is your your feedback forms 
all of these aspects are very important now as 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 if you're looking at operational excellence the whole idea is that as an employee of an organization you should voice out your opinion uh, opinion if you are happy or unhappy you think there are ways how you can improve your customer experience how you can do it faster if 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 the project that you have requires investment uh, it requires the organization to improve the technologies improve the workflows the 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 whole idea is that you need to look at ways how you can communicate and ensure that you do actively participate when the top management is trying to understand how do you make things better for your customer as you know in the 21st century and in 2021 you realize that it's all about customer priority and also the feedback and also how to deliver in timely manner if you know one of your customer or is really unhappy and you know there are ways to improve the improve the whole engagement with the customer you have to look at ways how do you get the communication communication ruled out to your supervisors it goes to your middle management it goes to your top management you need to look at it and also as a operation manager it's not just the feedback that you take from your uh, from your supervisors or the ones reporting just under your level you have to look at ways as an oper- operation manager the hundreds of people that are working under you look at the feedback look at ways how you can improve and also with as as you have employees participation you know the company is looking out for you you know the top management wants to retain you they want to generate the employee loyalty and also look at ways how you can improve the employees well being so this is one of the most crucial um, crucial trend that we've been noticing that the top management knows wants to know what's happening at the at the lower part of the organization with the, uh, with your workers supervisor and middle management now with 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 this we're going to move to cause and effect matrix so again this is a very very simple tool to understand what are the reasons that things are going right or wrong so cause and effect matrix is essentially what is the cause or what is the issue what is the particular problem that occurs and what is the effect so when i say the effect it is what is the level of impact to the customer for example here the why uh, the importance of why equals to the customer one equals to not important one e- 10 equals to very important and the correlation of why is one is none three is weak seven is moderate nine is strong you have your I- entry ids you have your xs essentially what we discussed with kaizen and uh, 5s and also theory z for example you want to map out what's going right what is the level of what is the level of impact what is the cause versus what is the effect so what you do is you essentially have to rate it down rate it out in the, uh, with the the odd numbers 1 3 7 9 and what you do is for example the process doesn't support adding multiple ewos per project the level of impact or the level of cause is 9 what happens is you need to simply multiply this into 9 all of all of the all of these ratings Uh, the correlation with y multiply into 9 you get a number like this uh, the engineers create operations a- and engineering parts separately so what happens is that the level of impact is 7 it's moderate and the 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 total or the parameter that comes up is 63 the only the only one part can be created in a single working uh, working tool so what happens the level of impact the cause and the effect is 9 which essentially means that this has very very high impact and also we need to look at it so both operation and engine and the engineering part types linked one another need to work to get to work together what is the level of impact it's 9 so if you multiply this into 9 you get 81 so when you map out the cause and the effect you will essentially know what is the level of impact and how can it be improved so as an operation manager you need to map out what 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 needs to be prioritized for example if you go back to kaizen and if you have an event you have 10 list less 10 list of particular issues that are happening and what is the particular issue that you need to address what you could do is you map out the process you understand how do you take this to the high from the top management to the lower management and you see the cause and effect you build out a map to understand what is the level of cause co- what is the cause and what is the level of impact to the customer so again this is a very very simple tool you don't need 
uh, any kind of template for it. You can, matter of fact, create it in Excel. It simply is to map out what is the level of impact and what it needs to be prioritized. So once you have the cause and effect matrix available, what you do is your fishbone diagram. So what is a fishbone diagram? So when the top management is looking at the data, looking at the projects, they want to understand what are the probable probable of the reasons why the the effect of the the effect and the cause or the uh, what's the level of impact or the problem to the customer what you do is essentially you brainstorm the techniques and identify the potential cause so how does a fishbone diagram look again these templates are readily available on your powerpoint you can map this out on excel there are a lot of tools uh, and templates available online so what do you do in cause and effect diagram so essentially in the cause and effect diagram, what you do is you map out man, machine, method, and material. So what is the cause for the problem? What could be the sub cause for this problem when it comes to human resource? Like this, you have your machine. What is the primary cause in the, uh, the, uh, when it comes to machinery? What is the sub cause and how do you improve it? Likewise, you have your methods. What are the tools? What are the techniques? What are the methods that are being implemented to understand the cause and the effect? And also the materials that are being used. For example, your hardware, it could be your software, it could be your manufacturing material, it could be a service, if it could be a service industry, it could be the systems, it could be the tools. What is being imported? What are the causes to the event? So like this, it gives you a visual representation of the cause and effect of a, of, a, of a diagram. So now if you're wondering, we covered, we covered various topics, for example, 5S. 5S is essentially a tool where you map out what is, what do you need to sort, what do you need to simplify, what do you need to shine, what do you need to standardize the process, and also how do you sustain it. When you map it out, you need to understand how do you sustain it. Once you have your 5S ready, you, you, you can host your Kaizen event to address a particular issue with just a certain group of people and understand who, what, where, when, and why, and how. What, what happens next is you when you meet, when you have the set of individuals that are required to understand the problem and the cause, you map it out. You need to map out the whole process. It gives you look at it gives you a visual representation of how you can improve the efficiencies and also increase the communication between the teams and understand what are the various swim lanes that is your various teams that are involved and also your milestones your theory z once you map out what is the problem how do you understand how do you take this from the lower management to the top management make the, you need to understand that to you need, as an operation manager, you need to map out the tools uh, and also the techniques that are that are that are just shown to understand that these that that is what is going to be shown to the top management. And then you have your cause and effect. When you when you're looking to address a particular problem, you visit the cause and effect. You map out what is the most impactful, what is the various problems that a customer is facing, and look at ways how to improve them. Then when your cause and effect is available, you, you map out your fishbone diagram. Okay, so now I'm going to cover the Malcolm Barkridge uh, Quality Award Framework. And I believe the first award was, uh, this, this award was, uh, it's essentially to raise awareness of quality management and how companies can successfully improve into quality management system. And the various business that are evaluated with this award as your manufacturing, your service, your small business, your education, your healthcare, and your non-profit. Non-profit. And the first award was first. Uh, the first award was given in on November 14, 1984, and also it is sponsored by the National Institute of Standard and Technology. Now, the six tools in the in the framework are essentially plan implement and measure once you map out your 5s you have your kaizen you have your theory z you have your process mapping you have cause and effect you have your fishbone diagram what you do is you look at ways how do you implement it so this is one of the most common tool is you plan you plan it out you have implementation that's ready and you also have your measure okay 
so what are the various ways that are in, uh, that are involved for example we are looking at how to evaluate in a healthcare industry for example the first part of it is planning what exactly is planning so planning is essentially your leadership is and your strategic planning so what is leadership leadership is essentially your your vision your mission your periodic review and how do you deliver this you need to build the brand you need to build the leadership the most important aspect in in deliver, delivering successful quality management tool is leadership the leader that's going to be there needs to ensure that he builds a brand builds a trust amongst the uh, the employees what comes with leadership it's very very important to have strategy what is strategy planning it's essentially looking at where would you want your organization where would you want your healthcare firm to be in the next 5 years also set smart goals and also set the benchmarks that you would like to to keep in the market you want to ensure you to keep the benchmarks you meet the benchmark and how would you implement it you need to focus on the process that we mapped out earlier you look at the hr focus and you have your measures analyze your knowledge management like i mentioned here when you map out a process map you want to look at ways how do you improve the process where you can look back and improve the overall process you have your measures and reviews so essentially your measures and reviews are your customer interactions your score trends your improvement action uh, impl- improvement action and your cust- uh, your business improvement is essentially you have your kpis that are in building your system you look at ways how you can improve your performance internally and how it can directly Im- impact the customer so with this uh, i'm coming uh, i'm going to come to the journey with great lakes and also the experience with operation management so this is uh, i've i've completed 5 years in the organization and i've completed i graduated in 2016 and i was looking at ways what can i do next in uh, in my career and uh, you know i was looking at colleges that i could uh, enroll in and also given with the pandemic last year i was distance education one of was one of my best option available so uh, and great lakes so was uh, you know it, it had the brand it had the uh, you know it, it was really attractive and so i reached out to the management and the marketing team uh, i reached out to the the faculty the teams and uh, i wanted to understand what what stood out about the college and what are the benefits for this for me personally and professionally the journey started off in the month of november and um, Uh, I'm currently uh, working as an order management consultant. So my my company is Affinitive, essentially sells financial data to customers. So and I'm also very keen to looking at ways how can I uh, you know upskill myself and also look at ways how my knowledge that I acquire through the course and what I have learned in the last five years how can I improve and implement this. So the journey has been very 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 beautiful. the the idea is because uh, you know great lakes is an institute looking at ways how can you have looking at ways how can you upskill the the students it look it looks at ways at looks at mentorship it looks at uh, it looks at continuous performance the course the materials it's extremely well well structured for example each of the subjects are mapped out to two weeks you have two weeks time the courses are released release you have a week to complete the modules with each module you complete you have quiz and you have your weekly case studies you have your assessments and at the same time you have a lot of group interaction so even even though all of the education is distance learning you have a lot a lot of lot of learning that happens and also it, it it's 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 a very good, it's evolved uh, uh, it is evolved as a person i feel a lot more in a better place because the journey with great lakes has been all about continuous improvement and also one thing i would like to mention is the mentorship and feedback so uh, with student, since uh, the most important aspect in an organization or customer or an institute is feedback and uh, as and when we pro- uh, as and when we look at ways for improving we look at we provide feedback you see the college looking at ways to implement it on the go the whole idea is that you feel that the college really cares for you 
you you understand that the next one year is going to be a very good journey a lot of takeaways the subjects the professors the topics that are covered and are are extremely relevant to your day to day life i i strongly believe the content and the courses that are covered are relevant to you know the new the 21st century of knowledge essentially you the stuff that you would like to know and implement in your day to day life and also and also i would really mention that you have a dedicated program manager who's extremely extremely looking out for you and ensuring that you know the feedback that you have the mentorship your grievances the problems and how they also looking at ways how to improve the process the course all of that is considered i it, i'm looking forward to completing the course and i i would also encourage a lot of you to go through the materials the the content that's available online and look at ways and i'm definitely uh, uh going to tell you that it's it's been one of a, one of experience and also the batch mates for example uh, we have a batch of 60 people and all of them are from various backgrounds a, a lot of learning and especially when you have the group assignments there is a lot of learning and take away from every every candidate you meet you build the network that is required and also with the network that you build it's also the knowledge that you get from each other for example i am from the op- i am from the supply chain segment or the operation segment i have colleagues that are from uh, in the in the in from various fields for example project management you have software engineers you have you have you have you have some and you have people working in the government agencies you have various people across in the batch and there is so much to take away from everyone so i would definitely think uh, you know this journey with great lakes has been really good and i would re- really appreciate and truly thank the the organization the college the institute and the professors to enrich with all the knowledge that we are learning on weekly basis and i would really really take this moment to thank everyone uh, also uh, with with this i would definitely want to say that there is a lot of take away for all of you um uh, i would request the marketing team to share the various links the theory of consent the basic tools and techniques for process improvement and five principles of lean and also uh, the whole idea is of the course is continuous improvement um you need to look at ways how you can upskill and i truly feel great La- great lakes uh, and great learning is like an unfair advantage for you given that uh, with how much you invest in the course and the time that you invest i guess you will definitely have an unfair advantage with from with your colleagues where because the amount of learning that you have is really really helpful so what's next for me so i so i i would be completing the course by end of this year and um you know i i have a clear picture of what i wanted to do so in the last 5 years i wanted to do various roles i was looking at ways what should i do next so one of the most important aspect is that you get lost on what do you do next with your career and um you know i want I, i in last year as at the same time i was thinking what should i do next i need to look at ways how i can upskill how do i how do i get to the level of management where i can in, i would be involved in decision making looking at organization process how do i get involved in the in the decision making with when i was when i was in that situation i realized uh, i need to upskill myself i need the knowledge i need to learn and have an advantage over others with that i took up the course we had we have subjects we had 20 for the semester 177 semester 2 we have 16 subjects and also you get a lot of knowledge across various topics with all the topics i am sure you will have a clear idea of where would you want to head head your career to you have your various topics for example you have marketing you have finance you have strategic management you have business finance you have statistics so all of these subjects that are covered over the course it gives you an idea why what where is your strength where is your weakness weakness where would you like to improve what would you want to pick up with this course you know it you get a realization fine i this is where my strength is and this is where i would want to head to the whole idea is that you know it's never too late and uh, we have uh, for example i myself have completed 5 years this month we have colleagues in the course who have with 20 years experience we have colleagues with 15 years experience you have people who are managers who are heads 
who are leading the organization you have startup in startup ceo cfos you have various people in the in the organization you have various people or various uh, in the batch with various experience uh, from different fields so that truly gives you an idea where would you want to head next so with this course it truly gives you an idea what should you be doing next and i'm truly looking forward to completing this journey and i would recommend all of you to go through the brochures speak to the faculty to the college engage with them understand what would you want to do next in your career and go forward Okay, so I'm going to open up for Q and A's, uh, and if you have any Q and A's, you can feel free to post it on the chat, and I would look it up, uh, and uh, feel I would feel free, to, uh, I would be more than happy to uh, share my insights, and also I'm looking for uh, you know the Q and A's that are coming in on various platforms. Okay, so I have a question here. Along with the advantage of theory Z, what are the disadvantages that are come come along? So uh, when you want to give a feedback to the top management, not all feedback could be important or relevant. For example, there are various objectives or various op operational goals that you would like to achieve, and not all of the feedback that that can that is provided can be looked into and prioritized at the same time so they're not necessarily any disadvantage of theory z it's essentially to encourage the loyalty amongst the employees in the organization to hear out the voices from various departments of the organization to understand the strategic objectives and decisions that have been made by the op or top level management to understand what are the uh, the the various improve room of improvements uh, in the organization and it's also to understand how do you increase the employee participation it's to essentially understand what the the various workers for example uh, the flow shop are the ones who would engage or your mid level management or the uh, who would essentially engage with the clients they would have the they would know what are the best interest for the customer and what could be better good for the customer so as with theory z you have a lot of engagement with the top management and that simply when the top management takes in the feedbacks and implements these uh, implements and look at ways that how they can implement the feedback is when you improve your empl uh, employee loyalty Okay, so I have a question here. Can we interlink Theory Z and um, Mal Malcolm Baltridge uh, quality uh, uh, framework? So, as you see that in 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 the, in this current framework, you have your you have your implement. Implement is essentially your process management and your HR focus, and also your measures analysis and your knowledge management. So in the implement is where you cover your employees in the organization. You have look, you look at ways, you look at ways and how do you standardize the process? How do you improve, uh, improve in terms of what customer feedback you receive? So you can't necessarily interlink the two frameworks or the two theories on tools, but they have their own significance. Uh, 
theory z is essentially to address uh the, you know the communication uh, and the whole engagement model between the top management to the lower management and uh, the the malcolm baldrich quality framework is is essentially if you have an organization and if you're an operational manager you need to look at how do you plan out what you need to achieve as an operation manager as a leader how do you implement and when you implement it what are the measures and how do you review your matrices or kpis Okay, so I have a question here. Can you sh shed a light on some of the process improvement so software tools? Uh, like I mentioned here uh, earlier that all of these tools are definitely available, uh, uh, you know, on various platforms and some of them could be licenses that you would have to purchase. For example, you have IBM Blueworks, uh, which is one of the tool that is currently being used across various organizations. So IBM Blueworks is to map out your process mapping it's very very simple tool what essentially you can do is you map out your process with your milestones and your swim lanes are other are, are teams that are involved and also like i mentioned here excel powerpoint presentation word these are your solutions to your problems if you can't purchase these license and tool you can definitely use the templates that are already available to build out and map out uh, the processes so you don't necessarily, uh, you know, look look at look at uh, you know purchasing any of these software uh, for process improvement. You do have a lot of tools that are available. For example, Business Optics is one of the tools as well. You have various uh, project management tools, templates. You have your Microsoft uh, Power Apps. Uh, I'm sure all of us use a lot of Microsoft tools. They have inbuilt uh, inbuilt uh, templates in, in inbuilt workflows that are available that uh, that could help you in your process and operational improvement. Okay, so I have a qu next question: Is how do you how do you bring critical thinking in Theory Z? Okay, so uh, as you know, in the top management, um, if you have employees that are extremely unsatisfied and you see that their feedback uh, is not considered. You don't hear out the voices of your customers. Uh, you, you're essentially going to have a lot of people that are going to come in and uh, come in and going out. You wouldn't have employee loyalty. You wouldn't. You wouldn't feel that you're part of the organization. So, uh, as uh, when you're in the top management, you have to understand that it's not one person that or one team that could lead the organization to be successful and also have a very, very successful, uh, you know, happy customers. It can't happen unless you have all your workers, your supervisors, your middle management, all of their voices being heard, your customers, uh, your customer participation, your employee particip participation. If you, if you miss out the whole interaction between the various teams, you are going to lose out as an organization. And that would definitely backfire. And you would see a lot of employees not happy in the organization. They wouldn't feel part of it. And, you know, they would just want, they wouldn't feel that this is the best fit and that's where they belong. So w when the top management engages with the various layers and layers of the organization, you see the loyalty. You see people working there. They believe in the top management. They believe in what are the objectives, what is the mission, what is the vision for the organization. Okay, more questions are coming up. Okay, so I have a question here. What are the recent updates in operational excellence in and around MNCs? Don't you think these theories are old? Um, I would, of course, uh, the, the process has been, in, uh, the processes have been involving. Um, 
but uh, when you are involved for example uh, i have actually been part of a, a very big project uh, it was led with a uh, with a black, master black belt um, and this is essentially to address an issue where we had invoices which which are being issued and the idea was to increase the 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 accuracy or the perf- uh, the accuracy of the invoices that have been uh, that we issue the customer so how did i do this as a project manager uh, or as a project champion so essentially we mapped out the high high level process map so essentially it follows your cipoc which is your supplier your input your process your output and your customers what we did is we listed out all the stakeholders we mapped out the process i still use the process mapping what i did is we generated a pareto chart which is essentially again this is a very i wouldn't say it's a very tool old tool or technique that is essentially we had 60000 invoices issued in 2020 and we took a sample size of 1000 invoices 916 invoices and we listed out of the errors what is the reason of errors and converted that into data what did we do next we created an end to end process map we used the ibm blueworks tool to process and look at various teams and various tools that were used in the process what happened there we created a pie chart again this is one of the one of the old tools that are available we mapped out the errors and what is the, what is the contribution of each of the errors the percentage of the error and what we created is the cause and effect so essentially we categorized the client the sales the internal teams found out the main reason of the issue so we used the cause and effect um, uh, the, the technique that we just looked at and what we did is we looked at fishbone we essentially what we wanted to have a visual representation of what is the cause and what is the effect to the problem and with that with all of these tools that we use we mapped out the solutions with of course you have your kaizen you had your kaizen event you with the kaizen event you had people coming across the organization the various teams the various stakeholders that came in we had a event we brainstormed we look at we look at the particular issue what were the set of problem what were the lev- what is the 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 priority of the problems that we had we got from the cause and effect matrix with that we derive the solutions and we use the theory z for example all of this was cascaded or communicated to the various layers of the organization the top man the top management agreed to the solutions and also versus what were the percentage of errors that were occurring and then they, they were implemented so again uh, the theories or the to- you know the theories or the tools that we just discussed are not necessarily you know old or updated of course there are a lot of uh, you know tools and techniques that are there and the ones that we just discussed is what you can I- implement in your day to day life you can go back from this session and look at ways how can you improve your day to day life even your five s's for example with with your with with the work from home environment you uh, you know there is always the aspect of burnout there is always the accept of how do you sustain in long term because we don't know when would we p- uh, virtually go back from you know work from home to office right so at the same time you can impl- Im- implement your 5s look at ways how do you standardize your routine you know that if you are working for 4 hours continuously you need to take a break and then what you do you need to ensure that your workspace your environment is organized and then at the same time the environment that you're working in has to be ensured that it's clean it's hygienic and what you do is you look at sustain you need to ensure that you work for 5 days a week you'll work for 6 days a week you work for 7 days a week so all of these simple tools and techniques can be implemented in a day to day life and also i know a lot of you out, uh, a lot of you out there uh, would also be probably going back to office but if you look back even in your workspace in your office in your mnc in your organization these basic 5s tools and techniques are there and you know it's a given that your your you know your day to day lifestyle that you look around all of this is been uh, is been sorted you have it it's been simplified you know that your off, uh, you know the process has been simplified your workspace is ensured it's clean it's eliminated with all the uh you know uh, all uh, all of the sources of uh for example the the cleanliness all of that is maintained and also your it doesn't impact your work today and what happens you standardize the whole process has been sanitized to ensure that it's sustained because 
you need to go back to the environment that you're working in and continue the day-to-day tasks. So it, like this, you know, a simple theory of like 5S can be implemented, not just your, um, you know, in your professional environment. It could be also in your personal environment that is at your home. When you're working at home, you can still use the, 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 the theory or the tool or technique. So I have a question here. Um, what is what is the Malcolm Balkridge criteria? Okay. So the criteria is essentially is your plan, implement, measure, and review. What you do is essentially you you pro you give a weightage to each of this. For example, leadership. You can you can give a weightage of leadership to ten percent. What is the vision, mission, goal of the leadership team? You have your strategic. You need to know, you need to plan out the weightage. You have your strategic where you give your three to five year strategy. You have smart goals. Your customer focus, for example, your customer focus could be your, it could be a 15% weightage because with, as an operation manager, you want to look at ways how you can improve the customer experience. You can map out your measures, your employee focus, your operations. Each of this could be mapped out in each of the weightage. Uh, uh, and then what you could do is also the results and outcomes. So that also can be mapped out to a voltage of 30%. So like this, when you're setting out the framework, you can look at how you can give the weightage to each of these, uh, each of the process, your plan, implement and measure. Your leadership could be 10%, your strategic planning could be 5%, your process management and HR focus could be 30%. So uh, when you are trying to successfully implement the quality systems in your organization, you can map out the weightage. What do you need to prioritize right now? What you can improve at the moment? And and like that, you can you can look at how can you improve uh, implement the framework in your organization. Okay, so I have a question here. How has how is how has how has the evaluation of firms applying the Malcolm Ballridge? So essentially, when how do you evaluate a firm uh, that wins the award? Uh, essentially, uh, if you if you go back, uh, like I mentioned here, the only the, the ways that you evaluate companies that are implementing the framework is essentially is uh, the weightage that we discussed. For example, if you have a company that's truly standing out in terms of if, it, if it's a manufacturing firm, it's a service company firm, it's a small business, it's an educational institute, it's healthcare, it's nonprofit. Let me take an example of an, uh, an educational. It, the last award that was given was in 2019. Um, and this was an institute in uh, in United States. And it, it's it's, it, the focus of the institute was how it, it, it was uh, it was a relatively new institute and uh, and it wanted to look at ways how does it uh, you know engage the large community and looking at ways how it could improve the quality of education and and um, how it was uh, implemented and how the weightage was given uh, you plan it out you look at ways how you implement it and at the same time how you can measure and review it Okay, uh, so I'm just waiting for a few more questions coming in. Okay, that's it for now. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you all for joining the session. I hope uh, there's a lot of takeaway. Um, and also, uh, you know, there was a question around what are the tools and techniques, what are the softwares that are available? Uh, you know, um, you know, the whole idea of this webinar was essentially to give you an idea that you don't have to be an operation manager 
to apply these tools and techniques. These could be extremely basic tools and techniques, and you don't have to apply be an oper operation manager to implement it. You could implement these tools and techniques in your day-to-day -day task. If you see personally or professionally that some aspect of your career isn't going right, and you want to look at ways how you can improve it, you can use uh, the various tools. For example, you can map out what is what is the process flow that you do on day-to-day -day basis? Uh, what are the bottlenecks? What are the roadblocks? You can look at ways how you can improve it. So um, the marketing team will share few links and few of the templates that I would recommend all of you to look at. Uh, that you can, uh, you know, look at ways how you can implement it on, uh, you know, on the go. You don't have to wait for it. You can implement these tools and techniques on the go. Thank you, guys. Thank you all for joining the session.